Hello everyone, this is a video regarding handwriting analysis principles. My name is Marcel Elters, Master Profiler through Written Communication. Please uh, like my channel, above all, share and subscribe. And of course, save some videos to your playlist. Handwriting is a behavior. As we move from left to right, while going up and down. Word selection and sentence construction reveals our perspective and perspective drives our behavior. So look at handwriting as a movement and movements have a direction and a destination. I did a brief introduction in handwriting analysis and how it is linked to personality traits in my book, We Are the Same, it's the details that differ. I'd like you to stay tuned for my upcoming book, uh, Handwriting Analysis Principles. In a previous video, I showed the mid-zone le containing letters A, C, M, and N, for instance, and anything above the mid-zone is the upper zone and anything below is the lower zone. We linked the mid-zone to the reality, the here and now, the present. But as the upper zone is the mental realm and the lower zone, our needs zone. The mid-zone linked to Freud's ego mediates between thought and action. It regulates our instinctual drives it determines whether things are acceptable and adequate in the present, whether our choices are correct. It is our sense of reality. In a previous video, we looked at Richard Ramirez's handwriting, and we realized that a smaller mid zone with a larger upper and lower zone has the potential for limited regulation of our instinctual drives. No handwriting characteristic by itself is meaningful. Every handwriting characteristic needs to be collaborated with uh, other handwriting characteristics. So we looked at the cramped mid zone with an oversized upper zone or our mental zone, thought zone, and an oversized needs zone or lower zone as the potential to overwhelm our regulation of instinctual drives. And thus that leads to potentially reduced inhibitions and a reduced impulse control. Click the link for the Richard Ramirez YouTube video if you feel like it. So handwriting is a behavior and it is a movement with direction, destination, and a location. And so upstrokes move towards our head, our brain, where our ideas, ideation, and moral compass resides. It's the mental realm. So upstrokes gather thoughts. Whereas downstrokes are action oriented, our hand contracts and is an action. A downstroke also reveals the degree of our determination and decision making. So this Richard Ramirez sample clearly shows that rhythmic movements have a lighter upstroke and a heavier downstroke, and that is normal. We see that repeat itself, light up, heavy down, light up, heavy down, light up and heavy down. This is desirable. In this example, we see that the upstrokes are heavy and the downstrokes are light. 
this reversal of a pattern means that during the action, the author had an intrusive thought which overwhelmed that action. And so the author was distracted by that intrusive thought, lost its drive, and was potentially thinking about other things that may have been delusional. That is, of course, a question mark. However, the strong, heavy upstroke implies forcing a new thought back towards the reality zone or the mid zone and suggest fantasizing, daydreaming, scattered thinking. This reversal of, of the pattern was labeled displaced pressure by my friend and mentor, Kimon Ayaneta in her book, Danger Between the Lines. She described it as an inappropriate release of energies, either mental, emotional, or physical. The personality lacks resilience and elasticity with the forced expression of those energies. These people can be explosive. Displaced pressure is something to look for in handwriting. If you're on the dating scene, remember this is not a good handwriting characteristic. The author of this note is Isai Sagawa or Sagawa. He is a Japanese murderer known for the killing of Rene Hartfeld in Paris in 1981. In case you're going to research and look him up, please caution is advised and do not have children around.